There are a lot of things in Minecraft that you shouldn't do. For example, giving a creeper a cuddle with no armor on, or jumping into a river in a snowy tundra biome, or attack a pillager tower armed with nothing but a dandelion. That's probably not gonna end well either. But there are a lot of things you should be doing, and I'm gonna share some of them with you now. Like, for example, a bucket is your friend. Just ignore that arrow, I, I had an accident. You can use them to right click on a cow to get a milk bucket. And that may not sound exciting, but I'm telling you something. Later on, I'm gonna show you why this milk bucket is so important. You can use them to collect lava from your lava farm. Again, I'll tell you why that's so important in a minute as well. You can use them to collect up powdered snow so you can take it off somewhere else because it's the only way you're going to be able to harvest that stuff. And it could save your life or you could use it to kill someone else, you know, just for a laugh. Or maybe make a beautiful Christmas card for your friends in December. I don't know, that one, I was stretching for that one, I appreciate it. But you can, look, look, see, it's nice. Or you can fill it up with water. And that water is really handy. And I'll tell you why right now. If you find yourself falling from a really high height, right click with the water bucket and it'll actually stop you from dying. I cannot believe I actually did that. Do you know how many takes that took to get that one right? Well, I'm not telling you. Come across some lava in a cave. Don't you worry, you can get across it. Water bucket down, turn it to obsidian, pick it up again. You'd still keep the water, you don't lose it. And you've got a little bit of a safe obsidian farm going if you wanted to. Multi-purpose. If you're in the end and you've got nothing, whoa. <laughs> Should we try that one again? If you're in the end and you've got a water bucket, you can save yourself from Enderman. Place the bucket down where you're standing. You won't be washed anywhere, but if you look at an Enderman, they'll get really aggressive towards you. Yeah, except they're not keen. They won't come anywhere near you because that water, no, they're not happy. I don't know why I didn't put the water bucket down first time. That would have been far safer. Coming back to that lava bucket like I promised you, if you have got a lot of stuff to smelt, and by a lot, I mean more than one stack, you need to be using a lava bucket as your fuel. Inside here, I have flowed several bits of iron, two full stacks of iron going through there. That was a single lava bucket that I put in the front. I have got one bucket back. I get to keep the bucket. I've got 22 iron ingots already. Ready. There's 64 in the top there. The flame's almost not gone whatsoever, and there's only 41 iron there. That lava will smell 100 items. 100 items as opposed to eight that coal will smell you. It is a completely renewable resource that you can use as a fuel. You wanna go to the nether, but you haven't got a diamond pickaxe, so you can't mine out any obsidian. That, my friends, is not a problem. Get the lava that you have harvested from your farm Place a bucket of it there and stick a water bucket right next to it. Then remove the water bucket. Then you can do it again with another bit of lava there. Put the water bucket there. Take the water back. Another bit of lava there. Take the water bucket back. Take another bit of lava there. Water bucket again. You can see what we're doing. We are creating this obsidian gateway that will take us through to the nether. But now you've got a portal, but you haven't got any way to light it because you've not got flint and steel. That's no bother either. Grab yourselves a couple of bits of wood, planks or logs, it really doesn't matter. And then pop some lava right next to it. That's gonna set fire to that wood. This happens a lot quicker in Java than it does in Bedrock. But once that fire catches the wood, it'll eventually tick across to light up that portal. Bedrock is really, really quick. Java, it can take a little while. In fact, to be honest, in Java, it can even take a few goes, so do bring a few bits of wood with you. And whilst we've got a portal open, I just wanna show you some must-do stuff around the nether. If you're wandering around the nether fortress, make sure you take some slabs with you, round corners and things like that. Stick slabs two blocks up like that, so you can walk under it, but a wither skeleton cannot, and it's gonna stop you getting snuck up on around corners. Believe me, you'll thank me for this one. And as if to prove a point, here is one. And I am using a very special sword to hit it. It has got loot in three and smite five. This is your best bet if you have got wither skeletons around you. Loot in three will improve the chances of you getting a wither skeleton soul to about one in every 11 wither skeletons, rather than about one in every 43 which is, well, quite a lot of wither skeletons. And Smite will make sure that you get them with just a single hit. And this is also where this bucket of milk comes in handy. Let's say you get bashed by one of these by accident, which is never a good thing. They're gonna give you the withering effect. That can be fatal, especially in hard mode, like I'm in at the minute. Drink that milk bucket, 
Bang, that wither effect is completely gone. And then bash him again. You can bet your own back on him. Come on, fella. Come this way. You know you want to. Uh, bang, there you go. Sorted. Bastion remnants are great places to get loads and loads of treasure. However, if you open these chests, these piglins are going to get really upset with you. The only reason they're not upset with me right now is because I've got these golden boots on. And yeah, you could take wearing the golden boots as being a tip as well. We'll add that onto the count. But the real tip is how to get the treasure out of these chests without opening them and getting and these fellas really upset well it's actually really quite simple what you need to do is a bit of a stealth attack carefully dig out blocks underneath that pop down a shulker box like that and then get yourself a hopper and place the hopper underneath that chest and into the shulker box that is going to empty the chest out for you take those blocks why not you might find them handy and eventually you can empty out that shulker as well but don't do it inside because again the piglins will think this shulker belongs to them if you open it and they'll get upset so take the shulker away and open it where there aren't any piglins and then you get all the stuff that was in that chest and they won't ever know because they're stupid so what stash did we get oh we got loads look at that we got seven magma creams we've got a crossbow we've got five crying obsidian some gilded blackstone and a banner pattern for the snout. This was a really good one. But that little trip has left me with only three hearts because every now and again, you do get bashed when you're in the never. So what food should I be eating? Should I be eating the best food that I've got or should I be eating my dross? Well, you might be surprised to learn that you should really eat the dross first. Eat a couple of sweet berries until you've got just a little bit of hunger bar left and then eat your good stuff. That's because you will get way more saturation if you do it that way around than if you eat the good stuff first, which means you'll get more hearts healed in your heal bar as a result. So two sweet berries in, I'm now eating my golden carrot and that gives me almost all of all my hearts, if not all of my hearts, there it is. That was the way to do it. If I'd have eaten the carrot first, I probably would have been one heart short. And seeing as I'm in this desert biome, I wanna share something else with you. See these dead bushes? These dead bushes, if you break them, you sometimes get a stick and that's amazing, but that dead bush will never ever grow back. In fact, these dead bushes only stay around here at world generation. Once they're gone, they're gone. They are literally one of the least regeneratable blocks in Minecraft. Is regeneratable a word? Well, if it's not, it should be. However, if you come at them with a pair of shears, you get the whole bush itself, which is actually quite useful. Remember, these only occur in desert-like biomes, so deserts are mesas. As a result, they're really, really rare. So maybe you could trade them with friends on a server, or maybe you could use them for something else like decoration. For example, you can make decorative bushes. I've got this horrible bland wall behind me. But what I can do is I can place two dirt blocks like that. I can put in some trapdoors there, trapdoors there, and also trapdoors there, flap them down like that. And then what I can do is I can put those bushes on those as planters. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. And so does Mr. G, the golem. Obviously they look fantastic. They look terrible. We need to sort it out. But what I can do is put that bush there and maybe stick those leaves right there. And you have now got a trunk that goes into this decorative topiary type thing. And yes, I did just struggle with the word decorative. If you trip over a wandering pillager patrol and end up with a bad omen effect because you've killed them all, don't panic. Find yourself a desert village and run as fast as you can into that tower. Because when you come in, that raid is going to start. You're going to hear the horns and they are going to be coming. Get yourself into the tower and right to the top. From here, you have got a great view of the pillagers and you can shoot them out of the skies, assuming they come into view. You can shoot them out with a bow and arrow and the golem probably will help you as well. But it's all well good. Move around the tower. You can see that doesn't matter where in the village they are. If you're a good shot with a bow, you should be able to get it. I've got him. He went red. I promise. I have to be honest. That wasn't the greatest demonstration, but you're probably better at it than I am. There you go. See, I can hit it. And given we were on the subject of light, yeah, I know we weren't, but I had to do segue somehow. Torches have a light level of 14. Now that sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple. If I put that down there and I stand on the same block that that torch is on and I pull up my F3 screen, what that shows me is the sky has a light level of 15. That's because it's daytime. If it was nighttime, that would be zero. But the block has a light level of 14. And if it was nighttime, it would still be a light level of 14. Now, it used to be that mobs had to have a light level of seven or below in order to be able to spawn. So if you're playing an earlier version of the game, you need to consider that light levels of seven or below are dangerous. However, now, 
it's light level zero. And what that means is we need loads fewer torches in order to light up our bases to not have any mobs spawn. And I'll show you what I mean. So this has a light level of 14, this block right here, which means that's 13, that's 12, that's 11, that's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's only this block right here that I've put the torch on that has a light level of zero. If I remove that and I say that that's got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen again, and I put a torch there. That is a massive gap between those torches, but not a single block between them in a straight line has a light level of zero. And I'll prove it to you by bringing up my F3 screen again. Now you watch that block. I'm standing on the torch. It's block 14. If I keep walking all the way down, it goes all the way down to one, and then it goes back up to two again until we get back up to 14. And that means you can have 25 blocks between two torches in a straight line before you have any problems with mobs. So you're gonna use so many fewer torches, it's crazy. If you're making a house and you want some walls that are made out of stone or wood or anything like that with some windows in, please, 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 and dare I say, please just one more time, don't make your wall flat like this because your entire building will look like a box. What you should at least do is indent that wall ever so slightly, it makes for such a better look. I put in a little bit of an extra feature with those windowsills as well with a pot and a plant and also a lantern. It lights up the area for you both inside and out that lantern so you don't get mob spawning. But look at the difference to that flat wall. But you can take it further than that. Add some additional texture by putting some stone bricks, some andesite, some flat stone in there as well as the cobble. Use some trapdoors to give an extra tiny little bit of depth. Use slabs and stairs in sequence so you get that kind of up and down undulating effect. Put another layer up on the top, put some steps at the bottom, use buttons, whatever you like, the odd bush is good. That makes the house look like a home. And trust me when I tell you, bushes are your friend. However, if you get a creeper near your house and you know they're coming for you, make sure, unless you're certain you can kill it without it exploding, that you pull it into some water. Once that's in the water, it is not gonna do any damage whatsoever, except possibly to you, but it's not gonna blow up, not even dirt no problems with your house. And that's maybe a really good reason to put yourself a little water feature in near your house and that way you can draw the creeper in. Lots of people spend a lot of time mining in Minecraft. I do myself, I really get a lot of pleasure out of it. It is a great way to get all of the resources that you need. Some people just like to wander around the caves and see what's exposed. Look here, I've got some lapis down at the bottom. There's iron behind me, we've got copper. There's all sorts going on. However, some people like to branch mine. And I've got to be honest, I really enjoy branch mining myself and find it very relaxing. But if you choose to branch mine, please make sure you do it the most efficient way you can. And this is how. And I know I'm about to open up a can of worms in the comments. If you disagree, you feel free to say so. When you branch mine, you are gonna be digging out three by one tunnels like this. That's because when you do a three by one tunnel like that, you're gonna expose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks around you. If you only do a two by one tunnel, which a lot of people do, and that's fine, you are only gonna be exposing one, two, three, four, five, and six blocks. So you've got 25% more blocks exposed, meaning you've got 25% more chance of finding a hidden mineral, like a diamond or lapis or emerald or whatever it is you're looking for. What other people do is they branch mine with two between each tunnel, not three, two, so as you expose absolutely every rock between the two tunnels. Now that isn't necessary either because the important minerals, iron, lapis, diamond, very rarely occur in a straight line or in single blocks. So what happens is they come out of that single strip and as a result, you almost never, almost never miss a thing. And if you do miss a thing, actually the efficiency that you're given by doing this three gap rather than two gap is well, well worth it for the coverage. So you can happily branch mine away, safe in the knowledge that you're not gonna miss anything also knowing that you only have to have 25 blocks gap between your torches in order to not have any zeros. That's assuming that you put your torches on the bottom block. I put my torches on the middle block there, so you wouldn't have to reduce that space by two. So it'd have to be 23 blocks, not 25. And as I say, if you disagree with me, 
Put your comment down below and title it, I disagree with Avamance because any other titles will be disregarded. They totally won't. So those are just a few things that I think you should be doing whilst you're playing Minecraft. Now I know there's loads of other things and I'd be really interested to know what you think. Stick them down in the comments below, what you do always consider doing whilst you're playing Minecraft. And I'll look forward to seeing all of those down in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.